Hello, it is winter time and this is the perfect opportunity to make a collage. And our collage is going to be inspired by the illustrator Ezra Jack Keats. You might know him from the famous book, The Snowy Day, okay? And when he made his illustrations for his book and many other books, he used collage. And collage is when you use paper, um, in our case, construction paper, cut up magazines, photographs, whatever you have, and you're putting it together to make an artwork. That's what a collage is. And we learned about collages before, but we're going to be making a winter collage. So all you really need is construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, whatever paper you have around you, if you've got magazines, if your parents have magazines, old books, don't chop up books without asking your parents though. Anything that is paper, you can use that for a collage. So you're gonna need paper for the base, so the background, and you're gonna need paper to put your details in. And just because it's a collage doesn't mean you can't draw on it too. You could do the same thing. That's called mixed media. Um, but I'm gonna give you guys some ideas. All right, so first things first, picking a background. So what I like to do is I like to use the construction paper for the background. And there's a few options you can use if you do have construction paper. So I like to use for a background for a winter landscape, our colors like white, blue, pink, or purple. Now purple and pink are good for the sky because those are cool colors. If you wanted blue for a blue sky, you could do that. But I think I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and use I think purple. Yes, purple. Okay, so that's gonna be for my background. And then you guys will be able to see better too. All right, so that's gonna be for my background. All right, so now I have my background color or colored paper, I should say. Um, if you're choosing a colored paper, you don't have to worry about coloring in the sky. It makes it so much easier. So just get a color that you like, whatever would speak to you as being a winter color. So I'm gonna choose purple. So any type of color that make you think cool thoughts, like cool purples, pinks, even white, doesn't matter, but use whatever you have. Okay, so that's gonna be our background. Then for the snow part, I'm just using printer paper and I'm just gonna tear it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna tear it, and I'm just gonna go with whatever shape that I got. And I'm gonna place it in my paper to see how it fits. And I can see there's a little space after, over here, so I'm gonna just tear another piece. And I can put it down here. And it's okay if it doesn't completely match up, you can always kind of tear it. And then these lines too, it's gonna give your uh, picture a little definition and make it come out a little bit, a little bit of dimension. Okay, so don't worry if it's not matched up perfectly. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear this piece a little bit, like right there. And you can actually use these scraps, so save your scraps. Okay, and I'm gonna put this one on top too. And I don't like how this line is um, completely straight. That doesn't look natural. So snow wouldn't stop like that. I guess maybe if you shoveled it, but we're just gonna tear it and make it, make it more rounded. All right, and see that texture there too is also gonna help your picture look really realistic. Realistic and give it dimension, okay. Different textures, part of a collage is texture, and if you have different textures like that, it's gonna really make it pop. All right, I'm using a glue stick. Of course, you could use Elmer's glue. Um, you don't wanna use too much glue because if you use too much glue, you're gonna press it down, it's all gonna squirt out the sides. So glue dots, dots, not puddles. All right, so what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna actually put another piece of paper down underneath it, scrap paper, so I don't get it over my kitchen counter over here. And I'm gonna glue the back of it. Okay, and then I'm gonna place it here. Just wanna make sure everybody can see this on camera. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna put my other part right here. I'm just gonna place it down. It's always good to kind of plan it out first before gluing it down because you can't pull it back up once it's down. All right, and then we're just gonna glue carefully. I'm using a lot of glue just to make sure it doesn't um, like stick up, but you can use a lot of glue if it's a glue stick. Liquid glue, don't wanna do that. That is a disaster waiting to happen. All right, so we're gonna line that up. Gently smooth it out. All right, now we have our base. All right, 
So in Ezra Jack's, Ezra Jack Keats's um, children's book, um, The Snowy Day, um, Peter, he goes on kind of an adventure. He walks around his neighborhood and just kind of does stuff in the snow. So what we're gonna do is we can make Peter and we can make some details, all right? And to make Peter, and Peter's pretty easy to sketch out, and Peter has a red snowsuit. You could always um, use whatever color you want. And I'm making Peter, it does not have to be Peter, um, but I'm gonna do Peter. And Peter, he kind of looks like a starfish because he's got the big hood on and then the arm sticking out and then the legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take my, I guess I could use a pencil, where's my pencil? I'm gonna trace them out. So I don't want him to be too big. So I'm gonna make, let's see. Oh, I'm gonna put up this paper over here so you guys can see. So I'm gonna make his head. And he's kind of got like a teardrop shaped head because the hood is going up. And then he's got the arms that stick out. And depending on what action is happening in the um, picture that you're making, you'd have him posing in different ways. So I'm just gonna have him with his arms kind of out. Um, in the story, he wants to do a snowball fight, so you could definitely do that in your picture. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw his arms. And I don't have to get really fancy because he's wearing such a big bulky snowsuit that you're really not gonna see any of the details. That's what makes it really easy to draw too. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down to make his torso. And like I said, he does look like a star in the picture or in the illustrations, I say. So there you go. And it does not have to be perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut him out. And when you're cutting, you wanna keep your scissors in the same spot, but just move your paper. So my scissors are always gonna be pointing up and then you're turning your paper. And that's gonna help control the cuts. And these scissors are humongous. It's easier to use small scissors, but this is all I have. Okay, I'm turning my paper. Okay, turning my paper, turning my paper, and then you can reposition it as you go along. But really, you're keeping basically your scissors in the same spot and then turning your paper. Turning my paper. And those little spots, those are tricky, so be careful. Well, I am struggling a little bit here, but that's because my scissors are so big. So you want to try to use a smaller pair of scissors. These are like giant scissors. Okay, all right, we survived. Put that away. All right, and we're gonna put Peter in our picture. Just making sure if everybody can see the picture. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put Peter kind of chilling up here on top of the snow, all right? And I'm gonna glue him down. Take my scrap paper again, that orange. Okay. Put Peter down. Okay. Awesome. And then I'm gonna cut out his face. Just get a color that I like for his face. for his face, so we need to problem solve. I'm going to use white paper. I'm going to cut it into an oval. Okay. I just want to match it up and see if it works. A little big, so we're going to trim that. Okay. I'm gonna stick it down. Okay, that 
works. Take a little bit of glue. If you wanted to draw the face, you can draw the face, but you don't have to draw the face. We can keep it really simple. In a lot of his illustrations, he doesn't even draw the faces. All right, so, um, all right, other things in the picture. So um, Ezra Jack Keats used a lot of old scrap books and newspapers. Um, I don't have any newspapers or books to use, so I'm just gonna continue using construction paper. Um, so if you're making like a building in the background, I can use some of the scrap paper cut it into a rectangle. And since it's in the background, because in the um, story, um, Peter's in the city and there's lots of tall buildings. So I'm just gonna keep it tall and I'm gonna see if I can try to tuck it underneath that snow. And I can put it right there, perfect. But you can make them anywhere you want or it doesn't even have to be Peter, it could be anybody, it could be you. I'm gonna glue that. On the edge. Let's see, I should have put my scrap paper down. Okay. And then for the top of the building, I want some more snow. So I'm gonna rip some more paper. Let's see how it looks. Top. I like to tear the paper because it gives really cool texture. Make that smaller. Cool. I think that works. So. Okay. And it's okay if it actually goes off those edges too. That'll help make it look realistic. All right. And then you can start adding other details. Like if you want to add windows. So if you're making a window, I don't have a lot of color options here. So I'm just going to cut the edge here to make a strip. That's an easy way to get some rectangles. And I'll cut it. to show the whole building you don't have to show the doors and everything you just want to give like details like little details so I'm gonna have some windows here you could use yellow if you want it to be um like nighttime and the sh light is shining through you could do that you could even cut or tear more paper to make the snow on top of the windows or like kind of accumulating on the parts that stick out, like the window cell, it's on the tops of the windows. Okay, let's do that, yeah, that looks good. All right. Can we still see the picture? Okay. Just making sure. Okay, this looks good. to do a tree, we could do a, I don't have 
have any brown paper and that's very frustrating. But like we have to do, we have to problem solve. A lot of us are not all together and we need to problem solve. So what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna color some brown paper. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna draw the tree out, then color it. So I'm not wasting my marker. So I'm gonna draw the trunk, draw some branches coming out. I'm gonna make it a simple type tree. Because in um, the illustration, the tree that he uses um, to whack the stick with um, is pretty simple. So, over here. You know what? I was gonna cut it out first, but you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna think I'm gonna color it first. All right, so when you're cutting out things that are very detailed, like it has like the different lines, what's easiest is to cut around the main shape first. Okay, and then start going in and cutting out your detail. Just take your time. Don't worry about making it perfect. It's actually okay because I'm leaving a little white because that can look like snow. So I kind of just kind of lean into it. Use what you got. And just be careful when you're cutting around it. paper, add a little bit of glue, all right, can we see my paper? Okay. Talking to the director, just making sure the director and camera people can see this. Okay, all right, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, now, other details that you could add. And like I said, you could draw on it. So if you wanted to add details for like the windows, you could do that. If he's having a snowball fight, you could add snowballs. So he's holding one, like I said, Ezra Jack Keats's illustrations are really simple, so you can keep it really simple. If you wanted it more intricate and more detailed, you could definitely do that. But it's totally up to you. Other details like footprints, like U shapes leading up to where he's standing. Okay. Um, in the book, there's lots of street signs and a stoplight. You could add that. You could add more um, things in the background, like more buildings, more trees. You could do a pine tree. Um, totally up to you. Um, if you wanted to draw a face for um, your character, you could totally do that. You could have more characters. And just think about sizing too. So if Peter's over here and his friend is all the way back here, that person's gonna be smaller, okay? Because of perspective. All right, and I'm trying to think, oh, how about some more snow? So, now if you're doing snowballs too, you could actually ball the paper up and that could also count as a snow and my um, glue is purple it will dry clear so if you're like Mr. G it's a mess 
it will dry clear. So I'm just gonna kind of bunch it up. And that's also gonna give some texture to your picture and some dimension. You could do the same thing for the um, snowflakes. Okay. And then for snow, same thing. You could ball up paper if you have tissue paper that works really well for balling it up and you can put the paper here and have it all over to make the um, snow falling down. Um, but for now, you can just keep it pretty simple because we're kind of practicing, but you can make it as intricate or as simple as you want, okay? So hopefully that gives you guys some ideas. Um, have fun with this. If you need to add more color to your picture, use some markers, use those cool colors to add some lines just to show some more texture and definition. You do that to add face and other details. If you have a whiteout pen, you could do the dots for the snow. You could actually draw um, the snow on. You could even cut out many snowflakes if you wanted to. So sky is the limit. Um, of course, this is just an example just to give you some ideas, but see what you guys come up with. All right, well, enjoy, have fun, and I can't wait to see what you make. All right, bye.